G'day, welcome back to Smoother's Backyard. Another debacle. We've got our old John Deere Sabre right on lawnmower. I think, I don't know what model, it's like the L100 John Deere, but uh, in the Sabre, Sabre edition. Bought it back in, I think it was 2002, maybe 2003. So it's nearly 20 years old, it's 18, 19 years old. It's done a hell of a lot of work. Um, and work it probably shouldn't have done mowing all that paddock out there uh, with all its rocks and ruts and holes and bouncing and anyway it's, uh, it's had a pretty tough life and it's gone pretty well I've replaced the deck in it once a few years back maybe even five six years ago uh, but now the hydrostatic drive doesn't seem to want to move I was mowing the paddock yesterday and did a a good three hours work on it and then I went to drive it up the hill and it wouldn't go it just chugged and then almost went backwards so <clears throat> I've got it turned around and I'm just gonna hook the car and a strap up to it and drag it up the hill and then see if we can find out what's going on with it I the hydrostatic drive in these is apparently not serviceable but I've seen a few YouTube videos that they've actually done it so see if I can replace the oil in it the fluid maybe might work, might be worn out, might be cactus. Don't know, we'll see. shackle off it's too small for anything yeah. a slightly bigger one but still not big enough for purpose but anyway that's what I've got should do it. Got my old ARB winch extension strap from the four-wheel drive. Can you catch? Lawson's going to move the car down for me. The old Subi. fits. Slightly bigger D shackle. I've got another one somewhere, bow shackle somewhere, I don't know where it is. Can't find it. It'll turn up one day somewhere. Probably or at least expect it. Alrighty, I'm just gonna drag the mower up the hill.
Okay. morning. Well, got a bit late last night and uh, we were sort of working in the dark and did manage to get the deck off and the transmission out and the axle. So it's all back here behind us. Lawson's at school today. So anyway, we'll have a look at what we, what we got up to last night and uh, see where to go from here. What you doing? There's Woody Dog. All right, so here's, well, there's the deck sitting upside down there. Here we've got the rear axle um, and the hydrostatic drive. I've taken the, the pulley and the fan off. And now we can get to this little cap here, which is just a, a little seal and should be able to knock that out and clean all that gunk off there first. And over here, six bolts and a few linkages and spring and a wire tongue clip wasn't too hard like I said did it mostly in the dark yeah we'll clean up this this hydrostatic gearbox here and um, try and tip the oil out little cap there but it's a bit perished looks okay uh, okay-ish on the inside there's a bit of a split just from heat I'd say heat and time it's rubber I don't know if you could see that on the camera there but it's not quite gone but it's well on the way now inside here is a little it's not too bad little magnet that's on a uh, little disc. It's not, there's some filings on there, but not too much. And that seems to have a full amount of oil in there. So hopefully replacing it will make it go again, but I don't know. It's not, it's, there's no oil missing. That's really quite full right up to the to the uh, filler mark well there's no filler mark but there's there's a a tube with a hole at the side so the oil would flow up and over through this magnet and it sit the oil level sits just below the magnet there where it sits right down so to me that's full or full enough Anyway, on with the job at hand, we've got a bit of muck up there. No. I don't want that loose stuff because what I'm going to do, it doesn't actually have a drain plug. I'm going to tip it up over onto this bucket. Oh, here comes my helper. On the back side, you won't be. So I've got to tip this over so it goes in there, but I think I'm, I think I want to, yeah, maybe you could do it like that. Okay. And as I tip it, I'm going to sit it on top of the bucket. Watch your fingers. Uh, oh, that's all right. Uh, Perfect. <laughs> all right. So we'll just let that drain out of there for a bit and we'll replace it in a minute. Well, I've got as much oil out of it as I can. Uh, so it's back up the right way now. And what have we got here? Some high guard, John Deere, high guard transmission and hydraulic oil. Uh, doesn't say what weight it is. Might say on the back. Anyway, uh, that's apparently the right gear for it. I went to the John Deere store and got this, a new belt, a drive belt for it. So 
and um, yeah, we'll throw some of this in it and see if it helps. And the kind people down at the John Deere dealership downtown told me that this takes 2.4 litres and uh, this is a 5 litre bottle so it's got measurements on the side only per litre, 1, 2, 3, 4 and then the rest which I could presume is 5 and uh, so I'm going to take it, I've got a theory though that it's just going to fill back up to that spot that it was at. Anyway, let's see how we get That's just over one litre. Over one litre was telling me it's full, but you're not full, are you? I know you're not. Fill around it. Just on two liters in there now. Two liters and gee, looks pretty full. Said it takes 2.4, but I'd like to get something on here and turn that. But my drill, um, my drill chuck's not big enough to fit over the spline to get to lock on. Because I think by turning the the action inside it's got little pistons that push fluid around um, there's probably empty spaces inside hmm find something to turn that but turn it turn it I can turn it with that that doesn't do anything but well the bloke's been turning on this for a while now and actually turning the mechanism over by forcing the wheels around as if it was driving as if it was parked on a hill and rolling it feels a little lumpy in there I don't know I mean I think that's what the little pistons inside do they bump around but I really don't know how they work so anyway there's new oil in there and a few bubbles have come up but it's still only got two liters in there and well, the guy at the shop said four, uh, two, 2.4, but it's full. I'm not going to get any more oil in there. And I don't see, I don't see it going down just by working the me mechanisms inside like this. It's a couple of leaders, I don't know what they will do. I'll try it with the of the levers engaged as well. I think that's the brake. Yep, definitely the brake. This one's your neutral selector for when you want to push the mower around just by hand. Move it, move it around. So that's engaged. That's disengaged. This one I had, uh, this is your forward reverse. Yay. There we go. To me that's still slipping, if it's not spinning that. Reverse. I don't know. I don't know, blokes. I reckon this could be stuffed. Because <laughs> it would go in reverse, but it wouldn't go forward. And that's spinning. The spindle in reverse. It's not really doing much to it in forward. I don't know. Put it back together and see. All I can do. So I pop the little magnet back in. Get the little. What do I do with that now? Here it is. The little cap. Pop that down. 
you a little gentle persuasion. Make sure it's seated. And I don't know. It's got new oil in it. That's all I, all I can do. I think I've got it all back together besides the cutting deck that can wait to see whether this transmission is going to work or not. Um, I ended up putting on a new pulley drive belt, uh, V-belt, um, that's the one that drives the engine to the transmission. The other one looked a bit tatty and I thought, well, while I'm at it, I may as well do that. Anyway, three hours later, because you've got to undo two front engine bolts to drop a cover plate you've got to un you've got to disassemble the steering and pull that out <laughs> and then you've got to take two other pulleys off and then you've got to thread it all back through where it went and put all that back together and, and then you have a new drive belt on your ride on i don't know if it's going to work after all that but i'll let it down off the jack start her up See how she goes. got a fair bit more positive drive like a lot more pretty happy seeing how it actually goes I might as well do a oil change oil and filter so the plastic caps surprisingly don't leak Keeps falling off every oh, time. I, I bought something for that too. Oh. Yeah. Look, look at that. <laughs> I don't know what size spanner it is, but I found a little shift. That'll do the job. No, it won't. Because it doesn't fit in the hole. Upside down, maybe. Yep, <laughs> it'll work. Yeah, but it's my hate shifters. 
They always seem to want to unadjust themselves. Maybe I've just got cheap, shitty ones. What are you doing, Woody? Hmm? You're licking me. Do they taste good? onto the chassis but it does drip into the bucket eventually so that'll do there we go and on the other way so it's further under with the bucket it's gonna run that way right it's been a while between all the changes I do them infrequently but you know I don't know how many hours this has got on it but I do remember doing this a few times over the years. I wonder if you get a new one of those. Have a look in the box and see. John Deere are kind enough to do a little oil change kit. Kind enough, or I'm silly enough to buy it. I don't know. Probably get everything cheaper somewhere else. Yeah, it's a new rubber there. And comes with an uh, oil filter. Two, two litres of the appropriate oil for the machine, which is a 10W30. It actually comes with a brand new air filter. I've never had a new one of those for it, so that's a bit fancy. <clears throat> and I buy Dingo's a brand new spark plug. She's never had a spark plug. So that'll make it go hmm, at least... 5% faster, a fuel filter, it's still got the original 20 year old fuel filter in it, so that'll help. Oh, and a service sticker, hmm, don't need that. Uh, take your look, that'll help things flow. Oh, look, the dipstick, who knew? You see the Oil look, looks pretty good in it, really. It's still, you know, goldish. This is oil. So as we saw, we just, I just ran it for, I don't know, five minutes. Warmed up the oil. Plus I was checking out the transmission to see if it worked. And I don't know if you could tell, but it, it was popping little wheelies over there on the grass, so. Heaps more drive than it had. Um, still peddling out a little bit of oil, so I'll let that go for a bit. And um, then we'll get into putting the filter on. I suppose we can do the air filter while we wait. This is a Kohler four stroke, uh, seven and a half horsepower Kohler, Kohler engine. It's got with a K. Oh yeah. I wonder if they should give you a new one of those. Bet you they don't. Yep, that's a bit flogged. Anyway. Another winger. Oh, that's tight. These foam outer filters, obviously it's a paper paper cartridge filter, but comes with the foam outer filter. Are you supposed to oil those or not? I don't know. Yeah. Well, there's the old one. I'm not going to oil it. Or should I oil it? I don't know. I wonder if it says on the box. Hmm. I just gave that a bit of a clean up with a bit of oil and a rag. I should have brought that rag over here. That 
just does not look right. It's just stretched out. Horribly big. That's just gonna go there. Look, it's like it's like two miles too big for it. <laughs> it's so stretched. It's not happening. cut a good inch out of that and it would be right. But what would I join it again with? That's the problem. Hmm. I'm just gonna dispose of it. Because really your air field has got its own seal and it sits down on here onto the base, that's just a secondary seal. I'm going to put this on with no oil, just because I don't know if they're supposed to be oiled over the top of a paper filter or not. If it was an all foam filter, it would have to be oiled for sure, but this is a paper filter with an oil outer. A foam outer. Did I say oil? Well, that looks pretty good. Woody agrees. It's not time for the kids to get home. Woody. No. Come here. Come here. Come here. What are you barking at? It's not. It's not their bus. No. It's not their bus. There's still another 40 minutes before the boys' bus. Okay? You settle down. Different. Wrong bus. Okay? Yeah. Go away. Don't knock the camera over. Go away. Don't knock the camera over. Go away. I don't even know if it's pointing at me now. Probably something like that. Right, air filter's on. Oil's pretty much stopped dripping there now, so I'm happy to put that cap on. It's just a plastic cap. Been on there for 20, you know, 19 years. It's never failed, so can't see why it would now. So, yeah, you wouldn't think so. Oil filter, oil. Oh, actually, this is an upside down job. I don't think you can do them. When you put it on your car, they usually up that way. Maybe don't do that. So get some oil on your finger. Just run it around here. Around the rubber. There's a bit of oil on here already. Dirty looking oil, actually. Wipe that clean. Wipe that clean with that rag that you just wiped all the uh, dust and grass off your air filter with do that so you know you can't you can't pre-fill an oil filter you've got to turn up <laughs> invert it's going to spill everywhere and especially if I had have done that and then not put that little grub screw back in grub screw in Tight this should go because they don't come to a stop exactly. So just do it so it gets firm. Don't over tighten it. This hasn't got a rim. Wipe off the excess oil that's spilled everywhere because it doesn't actually line up with clearing the frame. That, that's good. Rust, rust prevention. Um, Air box back on. Next time, if I'm down there, I'll see if I can find another one of those seals. But it's not really a seal; it just stops a bit of crud going in there. Okay. 
can't remember how much oil exactly they take, but it's not quite two litres. Battery's getting low, so I don't know. Um, it'll definitely take the first litre. I did put the cap on, yes, yes I did. And I reckon she'll take at least 1.5 because they give you two litres. Wipe your dipstick clean, put it in, pull it out. Shows, well, that was so fresh I can't tell. <clears throat> it shows I've got a bit just on the bottom. So just shown below the add or line, yeah, below the low tide line. That appears to be on the full line. <clears throat> it's almost at the full line. So what I'll do is I'll I'll go and run that like that for a bit, and then I'll recheck it. fixed <laughs> thankfully because that was a lot of work and I wasn't sure if it was going to work whether it would fix it or not so yeah I'm pretty pleased it's going well it's I've even greased the steering it's a um, yeah, it turns even anyway thanks for watching this is Smoother's Backyard hit the subscribe button and whatever else you have to do to watch it again some other episode whatever see you next time